afternoon and welcome to another edition of our interview segment. Today we'll be chatting with um, Barrister Ifan Ejofo. Barrister, nice having you on the platform. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being on the platform. Yeah. Please, on a nutshell, who is um, Ifan Ejofo? <laughs> Ifan Ejofo is a lawyer, a human rights activist, lawyer of over 19 years post who has vast exposure to general legal practice and litigation. And by the special grace of God, I'm a knight of St. Christopher in the Communion. So I live a simple life. I'm senior advocate of the masses and defender of the defendless and defender of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the oppressors, of the oppressed. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank you, sir. Um, is there more to being a good general counsel than just following the law? Okay, the, the question appears to be vague. Uh, because a general counsel, from my own understanding, within the context of a legal practice, means a, means a lawyer, entire a lawyer who is into a uh, vast area of practice. You know, in law, in legal practice, we have litigation, we have um, criminal law, we have a commercial law, we have a civil law, we have several segments of laws. So uh, when you talk about general, general counsel, some people may liken it to people who are into these various areas. Uh, segment areas of law. So um, uh, we specialize in commercial, specialize in criminal, specialize in civil too. And um, we've been doing justice to it. Since uh, my year of, since I was, I've, um, I was called to bar as a lawyer, in fact, I can assure you, I can tell you this: that from the moment I was called to bar till date, I've been, I've been into active legal practice. I've not ceased from one day from practicing law, and that has been, has been helping me so immensely in the feats I've been achieving in this law, this course, this discipline. Thank you. All right. Some say if um, Khan wins the Nigerian government that it will be the best um, chance of Biafra gaining more grants as a democratic society. Would you agree with that? Well, it depends. You know, uh, if it's within the context of the case we have at hand, uh, uh, with uh, particular regard to the matter before the court, uh, winning federal government is a, a matter, is a forgotten issue. It's, uh, that is a concluded uh, matter. Uh, but I know we're going to win the federal government. I've won them before. We're going to win them in court. Uh, so, and uh, because Nam Dekano hasn't committed any offense to the law. Now, the, <coughs> the right to self-determination is externally provided under our laws, sanctioned by also Nigerian laws. So, and in this sense of this like, right, one may not be deemed to have committed any offense to the law. So, by arresting him, and I don't think it's he hasn't done anything wrong by <coughs> accepting for his right and right of his people. So because it's a, a right provided and also covered, protected by a law, by guarantee under our law. Now, what is important at this point in time is to consider the actions the federal government is taking against those who are saying that, look, want our, our own sovereignty, want our states, and they, they are doing this within the confines of law. How they are being, of course, it's the, it's the, the, the facts abound about how they were being slaughtered, how they were being killed by security agents, some provoked, right from 2016, when Nanikano was initially arrested and also and, um, and detained unlawfully by the federal government. So a lot of IP members were murdered in cold blood. And the, 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 it's a matter of common knowledge. Uh, but this matter is also before the International Criminal Court, as I speak to you. So, <coughs> so this recent abduction of Nanikano in Kenya and the uh, extraordinary addition to Nigeria, which is now being challenged, you can call appeal as I speak to you. So in fact, as a matter of fact, judgment has been resolved. Uh, it's a matter I know by his grace of God we are going to win and we will get his freedom soon. Uh -huh. So the point is that the pertinent question at this point in time is to determine whether this right exercisable by the members of IPUB is provided under, under the law of the country? And the answer to that question is simple, yes. So, and he cannot shut them out. He cannot 
intimidate them to stop in, to stop in, to, in to deny them that right. It can't happen. So, uh, so and they have been at all time material uh, aside this right within the confines of law. And so this is a, this is extant and is clear. So winning government in court is a matter of, of a matter of it's a concluded uh, issue. I know we're going to win them because I, I've been into this case since 2015. I've been into IPOB case 2015. And it's on record, I can assure you, it's on record. I've done over 1,000 cases, in fact, affecting IPOB members against the federal government. And in, in all these cases, I've won all of them, with no exception. Oh, so the government has not won any of the cases. So, and I'm going to win them again. We're going to win them again. Thank you so much. So what's your relationship with Nam Dekano? Nam Dekano is my client. So I'm also leader of IPOB. Of course, you know, I act in dual capacity in managing IPOB cases. I am a lawyer, personal lawyer to Nam Dekano in one breed. In second breed, I'm a lawyer to IPOB as an organization. So that will tell you that it's special to me. So thank you. So what is it like to be a lawyer to IPOB? Well, I don't think there's anything difficult about it. The, what I can assure you, and I've been telling people, is that when you are in this kind of situation, case, when you find yourself in this kind of case, it's only you, it's, all, it's up for you to know, determine, identify what you want, and how to go about it. Of course, it doesn't go without being threatened. It doesn't go without being, because the matter you're doing against the government of the state, the government has the capacity to kill. They have the capacity to oppress. They have the capacity to, to shut you out. They have the capacity to eliminate. Now, but that capacity is limited because once God is in, in control, they can't excite, it can't happen. I will use myself as an instance, as an example. <clears throat> I've been attacked several times. I've, been, I've, I've had that share with them. They've attempted eliminating me <clears throat> not once, not twice, three times. But in all of these situations, in all of these instances, God saved me. So because of what? Because I've been very upright. And I've been very decisive in my steps, in my legal steps. So and I've not, I've not, I've not compromised. Because that's the most important thing. So in the course of managing this case, you must ensure that you are upright. That's the most important. No matter, regardless of the kind of threat you are getting from anybody, make sure you are upright and you are honest to what you are doing. And you are playing your role very well. That's the most important thing. But the moment you start, you start um, taking certain steps, which is prejudicial to the interests of those you are representing, then apparently you can be set up and you will, you will challenge going for that. So I've been, uh, there's nothing difficult about it because God is there with us. That in simple, in simple language, we give return all glory adoration and thanks and praise to God Almighty for leading us aright, giving us the strength and sustaining us, and protecting us against the evil ones who has been out there. Evil ones, I mean, when I mean evil ones, I mean the, 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 the security agents, the lawless security agents we have in the country, whom the, the government usually send after us. I will give you an instance to this effect. June 2nd, June 6th, 2021. My house in the village was invaded by Nigerian security agents, made up of the SSS, the police, the military, and other security uh, formations. And my PA was right in my house, murdered in a cold blood. Then dumped inside my car, one of my cars, taken somewhere and burnt alive, burnt. God so being so, God being so kind, I was, I was in the house. But God said, God protected me also. As I speak to you today, None of the Nigerian security agents, known them, military, police, SSS, civil defense, call them, have never accepted or admitted being part of the oppression. And when I filed action against them, against them in court, they filed the counter, they filed a resp response to, those, uh, to, the, my, to my suit in fire high court, denying ever coming to my house. But God being so kind, I captured them in my, in my camera, with my camera, CTV footage, captured all of them, captured their activities, captured their uniforms, possibly in some cases, captured their, their, their identities. So, and this we are played in court. I want to say, it should, it's, 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 it should be in the public domain now. It's played in court, and eventually I got the against them. So, and 
as I speak to you, two of my staff was also abducted during that operation, that bloody onslaught in my, in my home. Then two of my staff were adopted by, the, by them, and we try eventually we able, we got an information that we have been detained at the SSS headquarters. I wrote to the DGSS, demanding for release of them before the judgment was delivered last, that was last two months. And they, they, they never responded. So this will tell you the kind of sacrifice you pay in the cost of defending your people. If I'm not doing an IPOB case, I may not be so, I may not be exposed to that kind of uh, situation. But that will not deter me because I know I'm doing it. I'm 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 on a path. I'm I'm prosecuting a just cause. So it cannot deter me. And I know and I believe God that my 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 wards, my stewards who were arrested, who were abducted during that operation, will be freed. Uh, so this is I'm just giving you kind of an insight as to part what we are passing through in the course of managing this case. But once God is with you. I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. And God is with us. Thank you. Okay. Being the um, IPOB lawyer, do you believe in their ideology? I've, 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 I've answered that question before now. When I said about right to self-determination, it's extant. It's a right guarantee under our law. And that right, right it's a right even the Yorubas have to exercise. It's right even the outsiders can exercise. Is that even the full and within the confines of this of the of the of the generation can exercise? So and what I am saying, what I talk, what I what I'm saying is simple. We want we are no longer comfortable being in this contraption. We want our own state. So now, if government has taken them serious, they have a way of approaching their demands. Engage them to discuss with them. Let me know, understand this is my children. I said I don't you're no longer my father. We have the right to say I no longer your father to disown you. I have the right to disown my father. My father, if he was alive, if he's still alive, my father has the right to dis disown me as his father. It's a, it's a right. But this is a constitutional guarantee right for someone to exercise. It's a right, it's right sanctioned by our laws. Now, when they are saying that we want our own nation, we want to go back to, want to, want to be, I want Biafra, government should have ordinarily listened to their demands and know the possibility of probably meeting those demands. And also dialoguing with them instead of going after them. Because the moment they started this agitation, they started killing them. Of course, what happened in Wahai School on May, May 2016, it's a matter of common knowledge. Over 28 persons were killed. Now the Carlos house was invaded on 14th of September 2017. 28 unarmed and innocent citizens were slaughtered by the Nigerian government. These are people who were not armed in any manner. Then it's the, 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 the history of atrocities and genocidal massacre of innocent members of IPOB by the Nigerian state is there. Is the public domain. So, and that cannot suppress that ideology at all because it's ideology which is divine. The world, the state, you just have many ways of approaching them. Probably look into their demands. And by further determining them, they cannot have committed no offense unto law. They are fueling, they are, uh, they are fueling strengthening the agitation to continue because they cannot stop the agitation. It's an ideology that cannot be killed by anybody. Even the Swahili government cannot kill it. Thank you. All right. There have been. In the past few months, there have been a lot of uh, unrest in the southeast, Imo State to be precise, where houses are being burned and there are a lot of accusations that um, IPOB are the ones responsible for all this. Why, in the other end, they are saying they are actually attacked from the unknown gunmen. We want to know what measures have IPOB taken to distinguish themselves like I will tell people that they are not the ones responsible for all this. Um, Dangerous attacks. Thank you so much. Let me. You see, this very question. This question is a very important question, and I need to. I want, I want you to pay attention to my response. Shortly after the abduction and the assault edition of Namde, my client Namde came to Nigeria. There are protests, kind of, and civil unrest in the southeast in reaction to the manner in which he was treated. He was tortured. He was beaten was subjected to all forms of inhuman and degrading treatment at the point of arrest, abduction. So before it was uh, forcibly rendered render to Nigeria. So I don't want to go into that aspect of the case, but let me just clear you. Now, apparently, a situation such as this, you see people who will take advantage of the process of the system to start fomenting trouble and also start committing crimes. Now, in the course of time, it was identified by, 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 by the, my, 
my client, by Amir IP, will be identified, we're able to identify the fact that there are bad eggs, there are people who are using the advantage, who are taking advantage of Nam the uh, incarceration to be fomenting trouble, to be committing crime. And these are people who are not the ASM member. And they hide under the cloak of IPOB. They hide under the protection of IPOB. Once you get them, they say, no, they're IPOB. And when they commit to offense, they will say that they're IPOB members. They are not. Now, and they came out to issue statements. If you go to my, if you visit my, my social media handle, you see several statements have issued that effect on behalf of Nam the Khan. After discussing with him, he give you the directive to issue statements. <coughs> and a lot of IPOB also followed it up. So IPOB at some point also also volunteered to be part of the people that to, to, to participate in, in, in apprehending and also going after this criminal. In their various publications. It's there. You can find it. Go, go to your website. You see it. Now, but, um, you see, one thing about security, I used to tell people, is that when situations such as that happen, there is reason, there is need for you to also get people who are even at the bottom involved. When I mean people at the bottom, who put volunteers at the, at, the, at, the, at the local level involved, traditional areas, everybody involved, they integrate them into the system. Because, you see, it's only about someone who, like someone who live in a particular setting that can be able to identify someone who is a criminal or someone who is involved, who is, who is fomenting trouble, or someone who is, who is engaging in criminalities within that locality. But Imo State is an exceptional case in the sense that the government of Imo State is also assisting in creating a civil unrest and also creating problems in the state. I, will, I, have to, I issued a statement a few days ago about what happened in Imo State. To this is a place where you see security men. You see people they call security outfit created by the Imo State government. A bag outfit, security outfit. You see them along with the soldiers and also at sometimes SSS and the police. They will, they will be killing people without profiling them. Once they see you on the street, they'll kill. Look at what is happening in Osu Hitokwa, in Osu Mogu, in Olo Axis, our man Ko. They've killed over 500 persons there. I'm handling the case today. I'm going to court against the Muslim government. And I'm going to international criminal actions against the Muslim government. Now, there are what they call rules of engagement. Rules of engagement entail that if you are going after this your friend who is here seated, who is looking at me, probably identify him as a criminal. In the course of going after him, you're not supposed to kill this lady or kill these two cameramen. No. You identify him, apprehend him, you will have a certain choice you, which we will deploy in apprehending him. You will not, you're not, in the course of pursuing him, start killing everybody around that place. It's a crime against humanity. And that's what's obtainable in the state. Now, if I will ask you, can the state justify? And the, well, the, the response to my uh, press, conference, uh, press statement, the, the Commission of Information was making struggling to defend the, the obvious, telling us that, um, that the that uh, the state government is not even aware about what's happening in the state. Hope who's the dim man is as I'm concerned is the governor of Imo State today. And it, by virtue of which position is the chief security officer of the state. So if any there's any security breach in the state or any crime committed by the security agents that are being commit, committed committed as they are committed now, is one to be held responsible. Is one to produce those who are involved. Is one who are also to identify those who are involved. Because it's the chief security of the state. Now tell me they have succeeded in burning over 50 to 100 houses in, in Osu Hitokwa. I want Mama as, all, as over 100 houses who have them on record. So tell me what those houses are doing with the, the, with the, with the crime which they are fighting. So the state is not helping the situation at all. The state is, being, is actually creating the security in the state. Look at other states. We have Anambra, we have Imo, we have Abia State, we have uh, Ebon State. Have you seen that kind of thing? Escalation in the, in, the, in the security and crisis. Have you seen it in our state? We are not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to exaggerate the fact there are people who are criminals. And I'm not protecting them. I've written about them before. And I'm still saying it today. In, this, in another state, people were, security agents were involved. People were involved. There are strategies which was created by the state government to apprehend these people. And, I, and it's working out. People who are living, civil that were involved. So before you go to talk to Mr. Go after Mr. A, you might have profiled him. 
Before the fire attached before going after him. So, but as I speak to you today, yesterday I was somebody called me at about 2 a.m. I think mean, yesterday was Tuesday, right? Yes. Somebody called me about about uh, about 2 a.m. to alert me about what is happening in our mama. As at 2 a.m. yesterday, there are still burning houses there. So tell me, is there any justification under our law? For you to go after people's innocent people's civilians houses and lives and properties. People are being killed in the street. People are being killed in their farms. People are being killed in their houses. Only sons, family breadwinners of the families have been eliminated on a daily basis in the most state. And the governor thought that at the end of the history you go free. You must have a day with international criminal court. And we're making provision for a provision for that effect. It was, it will, by the time we finish with him in, before the International Criminal Court, it will start as a different to other people who are doing the same part. We are tickling our, we are tickling our evidence. We are tickling our facts. And we are going there. Because it's a clear, clear case of crime against humanity they are committing. Genocide that's taking place in the state. We have, if I show if I give you the, the, the video clips now, you will not believe it. You, 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 will, you will not believe it. It's heart trending. Thank you. Um, thank you, Barista, if I... Um, lastly, do you think um, the Nigerian judiciary is under any siege? Well, the point is, I'm not, is the, I don't understand what you mean by siege. The point is that um, the system is corrupt, profoundly corrupt in all aspects of uh, uh, the governance. Including the government, the judiciary is corrupt. I won't deserve them. We have, still have good ones among them, not all of them. The executive same thing, the legislature, look at what's happening in the National Assembly. So, um, and the, the worst part is that the executives, even the fair one, the, the few of them that are, that are courageous to deliver justice without fear and favor, some of them are being intimidated and oppressed. Only this one I read over the paper, over the online, that the presiding judge of Court of Appeal, Kaduna uh, or Dira Balkano, his house was invaded yesterday night by EFCC. Yesterday night by EFCC. Presiding judge of Court of Appeal was invaded by the executives. Obviously, I don't know what they're after. That. Right? So the point is that I, I, can, I can borrow your language, I wait and say that, and also I agree with you that judicial is under siege. I can borrow, because as, what's happened, what happened, what happened in the Candace case before we went on appeal? We have series of, series of applications we have with respect to his lordship. Applications were filed before the court. Like in 2019, we filed an application to, to review and order uh, Baketen, his uh, order, uh, revoking his bail when he started after, shortly after his invasion of his premises and his appearance in Israel. He deposed an affidavit of fact stating what happened in his house, how he never escaped by May out of Providence. And we filed this fact before the court to inform the court that look at what led to this guy's disappearance. And 28 persons were killed. It's a matter of common knowledge. Even the military admitted they go to, they, 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 they even, they invaded his premises. They admitted it in their various uh, uh, publications and also their press statements. So, and we are still looking for evidence to try to, to, to demonstrate or show you, to convince you that this actually took place. At the end of the day, that application was, uh, was, was treated with levity. So I don't want to go into the merit or otherwise of what's happening in the court, but I know that a lot of things are going wrong. The system is really, is rotten. I can assure you of that. And the judiciary, the judges have been intimidated, have been pretty intimidated. They are working under fear. What happened before Justice Ujamojukun, before yeah, my Lord, Justice Ujamojukun, in the court here? I believe you, and you, you, might have, you are familiar with it. During the when the, when the Soro was brought to court, what happened, what, 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 what happened to her? DSS jumped inside the court in an attempt to scare the judge. You were there, and the judge had to really stop sitting. They jumped inside the court too. I don't know where they go they, because the court made the court made an order. The sister that order must be obeyed. And the and the in an attempt to, to probably to free so then and the judge the judge the judge, the, judge, the, judge the, the security of personnel ran into the court. That hasn't happened before in the history of judiciary. It hasn't happened. We have not seen it in the history of the practice of law. My practice of law. The laws are going wrong. So the point that judiciary is actually under is, it can be correctly to say to be under under siege. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much, Barry Stephanie, for your time. It's a pleasure.